Welcome back to Adventures of Miner's Hall, the Dagger of Greece. For the next few days, I am going to be away, so videos are most likely going to come out maybe only once or twice a day rather than the three times they have been. And I'm probably also going to be alternating CK2 series. I might not have time to do any remod. I don't know how it's going to happen. If you want to know more information about why uh, there is going to be slightly cut down videos until Sunday, then feel free to check out the Discord announcement for the channel. I've written a little bit in there about what's happening. But what that does mean is I am going to try and pack more progress into each video. So I'm going to be a bit more heavy with the editing just to ensure that we can, you know, try and make up for the, the lack of every other day being able to make progress with our characters. So we're playing, of course, as Minotaur. We've started for some reason. I still haven't quite decided on the true headcanon of it. What We've been converting most of Chris basically just to cause chaos, really. We're just trying to cause absolute chaos amongst the Orthodox realm because, of course, we are a now apparently Fraticelli. We were we were Catholic. Now we're Fraticelli and we're zealous. So we are trying to we're trying to sow chaos within the realms of of law and with the realms of justice because we are a very very nice and good character. We're patient. We're diligent. You know, we're hardworking. And what's a better hardworking? And also mystical way to cause a, a, a religious succession inside a realm that isn't your religion than a big old religious uprising, a secret, a secret culty uprising. So we're going to keep focusing on that. Obviously, I, I mean, I don't think we have any points right now to actually dedicate to it anymore. Now we're 93 out of uh, the, the 300 necessary. I'm probably going to call the call it with this character as well. We're probably not going to go on with our next generation. Also doing the Hellenic stuff because, of course, we do need to go back to the slightly eviler aspect of the campaign that we've been setting up. We've already set a precedent for that in our dynasty with, of course, Gregorus the Money Pincher with, of course, our previous character as well, uh, Tragedies to the Cyclops, the Strange Mystics. That's one thing at least we have carried on throughout this campaign sort of thematically is the magical mystic sort of evil side of things. I mean, even she is possessed by a demon. Whether or not you believe that's Jesus is another thing entirely. But it does make thematic sense that we would be devil worshippers instead, if not only because that was kind of what I intended. Um, um, my prostrator Ophig Steer has told me about Remarkable Armorsmith. Do we need a Remarkable Armorsmith? I thought we had... Oh, we didn't have the Armor of Achilles. We lost it. Um, even so, our own smiths are capable enough. Now, I did notice that uh, an option came up that we haven't had previously here, which is... Oh, because we need 4500 Prestige. Ah! So we've only just got access to this. We have the ability to forge our own Damascus Steel Sword. And this is the Forge Your Own Sword mod, or Damascus Steel mod. It's called something like that. All the, all, they're all linked and fully credited below anyway. So let's check this out. Now, this gives us access to some very, very powerful swords. They are expensive. They're a thousand gold apiece. But right now, I don't believe we actually have a decent weapon. You know, until we can get that Trident of Neptune or something like that, we don't really have anything worth... Um, we've got the Obsidian Axe, which I believe is ceremonial, isn't it? Um, sword from Heaven, we have, which is cool. Don't get me wrong. Obviously, our Meteorite Sword there. But this will be better. This will give us more stats. It'll give us more bonuses. And it's Damascus Steel. You know, and we're, we're customizing. We're building the whole thing from the ground up. It's a lot more... We're a lot more involved with this one. So let's get on with it. Let's see. What do we want to build, though? That's the real question. Do we want to go for that Marshall-based sword? So normally, uh, whenever we do this, we, we generally tend to be more militaristic. So we'll go for, like, the Marshall plus three and the troop bonuses. Maybe this time we'll go from a different perspective. Maybe we should have a sword. And it'd be good to get the two dual swords to show the duality of our dynasty here. You know, half our characters... I mean, this character especially. Really nice, just... Very zealous Christian character, possessed by Jesus and all that. But she thinks she's doing the right thing. That's the important thing. So we could have a sword to represent the good side of our dynasty. And then, of course, we go back to our great-grandmother, Strategista Cyclops, who was a fucking psychopath, I think is the fair thing to say. An absolute, complete nut job. Arbitrary, cruel, deceitful, paranoid, proud, greedy, gluttonous, cynical, mystic. So... I think we'll have a sword each. I think we'll go for this one, though. We'll try and make the good sword. I, I, and by good sword, I mean the sword that isn't going to kill loads of people. So go for the stewardship bonus. Now, here's the real question. Do we want the personal combat? Do we want the unit buff? I think if we're going to be more of a ruler with this character, you know, we're not going to be... Actually, we could be leading troops. Well, and we're going to avoid warfare actively, but if we did go into war, it wouldn't be such a bad thing. There's no reason we can't craft another sword anyway. So I'm going to say... Um, what do you think? Like a unit buff? I think a unit buff might be more useful just in case we do end up playing as a character later on that can't lead troops. This is only good if we're getting into combat by ourselves. This is good for every other character that isn't trained in martial or personal combat. Let's go unit buff then. Prestige or piety? I mean, with this character, again, we should probably go with piety, seeing as combat generally tends to come with a lot of prestige. The combat societies come with a lot of prestige. Let's go for... And, oh, this is cool as well. Personal combat... Plus 10. Plus 5 if the previous personal combat is chosen for plus 20 overall. Or we go for opinion plus 5. Obviously, we'll go for opinion. Like I said, this is our, this is our nice sword. Calling it vision also seems pretty appropriate here. Castle Blacksmith, more used to horseshoes and helmets than work for fit for royalty presents you with the death. Oh my god! I never knew this would happen. I thought that if you declined that event whenever it popped up, just nothing would happen. But no, we do get some armor. Whoa! I had no idea that was the thing. Is it supposed to be like a little Easter egg or something? Because ideally, why would you press that button if you're not going to get some good armor, huh? What did we actually get? Poorly crafted. There it is. Poorly crafted armor. 
mostly a waste of good metal. The blacksmith who made this suit was probably drunk when they did so. I mean, it's personal combat skill plus two, so it's better than nothing. But there we go, vision. So it is slightly better than our sword from heaven. I mean, it's much better than our sword from heaven, isn't it? Morale damage plus five cents. So our troops get some bonuses. We get piety, stewardship, and vassal opinion. Very nice. Let's get that thing equipped instead. So we're going to lose some personal combat prestige there. I think it's definitely worth the trade. Cool. So we're up to 18, 18 stewardship. Obviously, very good. Means we can hold another domain, actually. So we might want to might want to try and do that at some stage. New court chaplain. Oh, God. Of course, he's Fraticelli. Oh, God. This is getting weird. This is getting weird and confusing. What have you got there? Oh, dragon amulet. Right, so of course we invited about 400 people to our court yesterday. Clearly not, because it says 190, but we invited a shitload of people to our court. So that when they die, we get their artifacts. So really, this is going to pay off in the long term. Until then, we're paying a lot of upkeep on these people. 66 gold per year. It's not really that expensive, is it? Is it? It's like, what, 5 gold per month or something like that? It's not that bad. So we'll um, we'll let that tick up. It, it's not so expensive to potentially get a load of artifacts out of it. And to be fair, we've already got a lot of artifacts out of it. We've got Hand of a Saint, Foot of a Saint. I mean, if we're paying, was it 66 gold per year? I would happily pay 66 gold right now to get a Hand of a Saint or a Foot of a Saint. So I think it's an absolute fair trade-off. Plus, we're getting a load of shit. Branch of the Keshmar Cypress we can't use. Tengri's Favor we can't use. You know, we can. We could, we could ship that off to China. We could send that to China and actually get some points for this stuff, even if we ourselves can never use it. Oh, we can't. Never mind. Um, oh, does it have to be active for us? We could send him the Steed Armor. We, we are not a Steed. We can't wear that Steed Armor. Let's ship that off. 375 grace to China. There you go. And we might be able to send some of those other artifacts to the Aztecs, I guess, instead. Um, so these guys, for the most part, probably have artifacts. This guy we can ship off. Somebody who just randomly turned it to our court, I guess. Um, send him a concubine as well. Send him our daughter or our sister? Let's send him our hunchback sister. Normally, I would obviously marry those off as breeding stock. But given that she's hunchback, we don't potentially want her propagating her genes within our dynasty too much, huh? And then in return, we will request, because we don't really want siege engineers or strategists right now. Like I said, we're, we're going to avoid warfare where possible. Don't really want an imperial marriage either. Oh, we could go for imperial marriage with, like, our daughter or something, though. That'd be kind of interesting. I mean, because we're going to play as Titios anyway, so we might want to go for... You know, inheritable traits. We might want to go for claims or someone prestigious. For our daughter, though, we could just give her a a random uh, child. Although, we might want to farm up bloodlines with her. So, who else have we got, then? Um, we could go for, like, our... Fo no, fuck it. That's a waste. I think that's just a waste of favor. Let's go for the artifacts instead. Boom, there we go. Zuj crossbow. Hey, that's pretty good. We don't really need it right now. We could give it to our son or something or our daughter. Protect them from uh, evil plots and whatnot. The thing I really... Being invaded by the Vikings. Oh, that's a cool idea. Okay, fair enough. Because, of course, in the CK2 Sunset Invasion mythos, the uh, the the Vikings were the one that en ended up giving the Aztecs the boats they needed to sail across the Pacific. So, that's, that's quite a cool little feature there. Um, do you guys want any of those crappy artifacts they can't use? Send them some of the Chinese artifacts, but, again, uh, I don't know that really... I mean, send them our Silk Shroud or our Ceremonial Rose. We can't wear both. I suppose, depending on the situation, though, we might want to swap them out. All right, fair enough. Do you want a concubine? No, I'm not sending my daughter. Do you want a eunuch? I mean, definitely send him off a eunuch here. I'm looking for the first guy, basically, without an artifact to ship off. And funnily enough, that's going to be more or less everybody. There you go. You can have him. Perfect. Right, and let's get ourselves... Oh, we can't because they're being raided by the... Because does that mean that the Vikings, just like the um, the Mongols and the Jurchens, can take the Chinese stone, which they have right now? Does that mean the Vikings, could we could potentially see, like, my good friend Bjorn on the Toltec Empire throne? I have no idea. We'll have to keep a close eye on that. That could be really cool. So then... Let's take a look at uh, how were we doing. I, I have that map that I need to update. Basically, while I was setting up, I did quickly send some guys over to, I think it was this province here, Pr Prusa, uh, to go and prepare some ground. Or maybe it wasn't that one. Where did I send them? Was it Nicomedia? No? I have no idea, but I definitely sent some more guys off to this area. Because like I said, today we really want to focus on getting this side of, of the Byzantine Empire, the Anatolian side of the Byzantine Empire. Basically converting as well, because right now we've got most of the central Byzantine lands. Obviously, we're trying to avoid our kingdom too much. And we've got a lot of the area within the Balkans that we control too, and like various bits and bobs that we've picked up. I think we'll just we'll just keep we'll just keep sticking along with that, but I want to be very careful. We wanna maybe when we hit 60, we probably want to pull the I think we'll we'll actually say that right now. When we hit 60, let's pull the plug and let's just do it. Let's do that religious uprising. Otherwise, we run the risk of, you know, dying. I think our son is actually secretly Hellenic, so he should, in theory, take over. But I don't know if there's also a chance he might revoke that, or he might, sorry, um, renounce uh, his Hellenic faith. He might leave and join another society. I don't want to risk it, because it's a lot of work we've built up to try and get these guys flipped over here. Um, that guy wanted me to convert to Catholicism. Did I read that right? Or, or he wanted to convert to Catholicism. The other thing as well is we have this 600 gold. I did try and invest a little bit as well between the episodes to, uh, into some of our other provinces. The issue is we've got all this gold and fuck all to spend it on. We could build an artifact vault, which I'm kind of avoid... I suppose we could build that up. 
stops other people stealing our stuff. But when we've got such high uh, intrigue, we don't necessarily need that. But it is a tax income minus one. Actually, it's not that expensive, is it? But with that, that's the last building in our domain built. We can't build any more in the hospital. We don't control either the city or the temple for obvious reasons. I think we need to move our capital. Oh, whoa, shit, look at our daughter. Grey Eminence groomed just, I mean, shy is not very good when you've got a diplomacy education. Ambitious, trusting, erudite. Shit, and we can give her kind as well. Chance of her becoming kind or chance of her, oh, come on, kind. Shit, she became frail, that's annoying. Charitable or kind? Charitable? She'll get kind even if she doesn't get charitable, so that's fine either way. Damn it, okay, so if we get rid of frail, because that's not very good. But, uh, and frail on the shyness is obviously pretty bad, and same with trusting. But to say she's got 19 diplomacy whilst also being shy is pretty fantastic. She, oh man, it's a shame we can't fucking play her, because she's better than this guy. She's better than Tichos of Greece, who just got thrifty clerk. you got to remember, we are playing with my education mod changes, which I know a lot of people are interested in. I still want to get a bit more balance in that before I put it up on the on the Steam Workshop or on ModDB or whatever. Um, where did she go again? So my daughter. Yeah, so with that, she gets some bonus to National Revolt Risk. She gets some bonus to uh, Fertility, uh, General Opinion as well. It's supposed to make each playstyle a bit more regimented, you know, actually give you a reason to fix some of those other focuses. I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether we... I don't want to... We can't kill our son, though, can we? No, we can't kill our son. Because we're not playing with CK2 Plus or any other mod that lets you kill your kid. So that is unfortunately not going to happen. That's a shame, though, because she is a very, very good character. I don't know. What what can I do? Go to war and have him lead our troops? It's not exactly a reliable way to kill him off, is it? I don't know. I don't know. We'll think about that later on. First things first. Let's focus on that. Let's focus on getting some more conversion down. And that's a problem. Um, our hunting dog died, which means we're losing that plus one health bonus from it. And we are also stressed. So this could be very dangerous. We do have powerful, but we are getting on. Like, that's what, this is exactly what I said. At the age of 60, we should probably just call the conversion here. So our faithful and trusted hunting dog has taken its last breath. Long as he served you since you first received him as a puppy. Now it's time to bury your old friend. Was this the guy that gave us the puppy? Ah, oh, thank you, my friend. We can build a pyramid for him. Monavesia just gets a pyramid permanently for a thousand gold. Oh, I was saying that we, we don't have enough money. Fuck it. A pyramid for faithful. Relo is that, and that's a permanent little pyramid. That's actually very, very cool. Um, I didn't know they were permanent. Yeah, just pyramid. Local revolt risk minus 5%. I don't think we had to worry about local revolt risk anyway, because, of course, you know, cultural. Actually, we are one of the most stable rounds. We might even be the most stable round in the world. Oh, that's opinion. Fucking fool. Where's the, where's the revolt risk? Oh, you know what to say that. We probably are as well. Um... Yeah, I mean, the world is very, very stable right now. What the hell's going on, like, over here, I wonder? Uh, peasant unrest. Does that say local revolt risk plus 10%? My god. I never really considered the uh, the peasant revolt risk being that much of a problem before. Ple peasants can play about an arbitrary steward. Peasant unrest. Peasant crisis. Oh god, these guys are, are fucked. 26% revolt risk. Man, that's, that's, uh, that's a little spicy. We don't have to worry about that, though. I mean, the Hellenic community doesn't actually do anything. It's weird that it wouldn't give a local revolt risk, you know? Even if you're going out there and trying to convert these people, even secretly... To, oh, I suppose the only issue with that is, of course, if you did it to your vassals, because it's within your domain, so you can do it to your vassal holdings as well. You could potentially get rid of a, a... I mean, unless they rebelled against you. I don't really remember how the system works. It doesn't matter too much. Right, cool. So that's a couple more Hellenic communities done. In a second, I'll get the map update so we can more clearly see what we've got uh, what we've got dealt with so far. Well, damn, I had absolutely no idea that this was a thing that could happen. I gave a speech to teach us about the importance of solidarity for our movement. I emphasized how important every member of our society is that we can stay strong together. Tichos just stood there, unmoved by my soft words, still determined to abandon our cause. Shit. So he's now left the society, which means, again, if we die, the society is gone. Like, all of these hidden Hellenic areas. And I'll bring up the uh, the map here that I've just quickly updated. So those are the zones we've got right now. All of the central Byzantine Empire we've basically ripped apart there. I would love to connect up the very top left-hand side there with the central uh, sort of Byzantine land. And, and just sort of pick apart some of these provinces a bit more. Uh, obviously, our realm we're going to try and avoid. But just convert as much as possible within this short period of time. And now it really is truly a short period of time because... I mean, short. maybe getting our daughter on board. We could try and... Uh, let's try and invoke sympathy for Pegasus. Let's try and get her on board. Fuck it. Come on. Help me out here. Um, she is kind. She's trusting. She's just. I think we'll go for... There will force many loved ones behind. I'm also going to send her a gift just in the, in the hope that that might actually change this here. Designate a regent. She's a good regent, actually. 19 diplomacy. You know what? I'll say that. Obviously, you might want to go for stewardship a bit more, but that's fine. Um, they will forced to leave many loved ones behind. There we go, nice work. Okay, so now we can try and induct her, right, when we've got enough virtue. 50 virtue. Yeah, okay, we've got 23 right now. Oh, man, I don't know how much more to risk. The question, the thing is, it's not just a case of saying, okay, when we're 60, we'll stop converting the places. It's whether or not the places are going to be already converted by the time we're 60, because you have to wait a few years before, obviously, the societies develop into a usable, a usable convertible place. What the hell is going on? Aztec invasion of Jerusalem. Um... 
I feel like we should probably help out with that, huh? Oh, he's actually moved some troops down there. Uh, that are winning. Wow, okay, fair enough. He might, he might be able to call things back here. Aztec invasion of Jerusalem is so, so weird. Oh, look at how far they've come. I never noticed that. And then they've also taken these guys as a tribute to what is that, like Abyssinia? Um, actually, I have no idea. What is that? Puppet master of, uh, uh wherever this place is. No, no, Batia. Okay, fine. And then the Mongol Empire is massive. And then we've also got the fucking Yan Empire, whatever the hell the Yan Empire is. What? Does that call that? Does that say that man was called the cunt? Go, go back. You, what did you do? That's great, Pops. Oh, it's probably because he's a dick. Arbitrary, proud, lustful, stubborn, cruel, uncouth, ugly. Yeah, but the ugly cunt. Okay. Um, what are we looking at? I was trying to go for their liege. No, Yan Empire. Oh, sorry, I clicked on the wrong place then. Um. Wow, look at that. He's actually Chinese Imperial. How the hell has this happened? Just created? Is he maybe a, a just a random man? He hasn't got any parents or anything. This is so weird. Look at the size of that empire. That's almost a, as big as Joris Bonson's glorious empire. What the hell happened? I have no clue. Well, I mean, I mean what's the religious map mode out, like, out of interest? Okay, the cultural map mode is the same. Religious map mode also the same. There's a little bit of Taoist kicking up here and there. Wow, that's weird. We'll keep an eye on that. I love how far Hindu has spread all the way up to Siberia as well, though. What the hell's happened there? The Mongol Empire have converted to Hindu. This is going to be so strange. Just give it time. Oh, I mean, look at how much all Orthodox is also collapsing. I mean, we're probably partly at fault there. My, my bad. My god, when these trade masters die, obviously we get their trading stores, their warehouses, other weird shit like that. But it's the amount of gold that we're getting from them as well. This is such a legitimate money-making strategy. It's unreal. Uh, just the amount of... You might like celestial necklace. Look at that, Gilbert's broken weapon. Uh, every few game ticks, we're, we're inheriting all this shit. Granted, it's also keeping our court size down. I wonder how much money we would make if we asked people to leave our court as well. Because bear in mind, whenever you do that, you take the money from your courtiers. Now I'm more interested in the artifacts than the money right now because we've got nothing to spend the fucking money on, short of funding our Hellenic societies and maybe developing our realm somewhat. But this is kind of insane how well this strategy has worked. Ah, the Basilisk one, nice work. Okay, that's fine. Lucy kept Jerusalem, huh? An impressive display. How to triumph. Good work. The people cheer as trumpeters lead a long line of procession that includes parading soldiers, carts filled with spoils, war in cages holding captives from the recent campaign. That's not very really cash money of you, Mr. Basilius. Um, wow. Okay. Um, remember when I joked about that and I said, if only my good friend Bjorn would take the uh, Aztec Empire? No. Uh, it's Raffin. Raffin Freyerson has taken control of the uh, Aztec Empire. Okay. Send him a gift. Oh, he dislikes wealth. Send him some horses. I mean, we, we could, but I don't really want to do that either. Uh, do you want a eunuch? Uh, we got, what's our what's our best eunuch that doesn't have an artifact? This guy all the way down here. There you go, you can have him. Damn it, that's a real shame that we lost all of our grace, but I kind of expected it to happen when, you know, when, when they actually went into that civil unrest. Is there anybody without a fucking artifact here? My god, there we go. There's a guy all the way down there. I could have invited someone to court and probably said someone better, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. Do you want my uh, dislikes wealth? Yeah, I'm not going to bother sending him anything if he dislikes wealth. Concubine? Do you want a concubine? My, I mean, infuse a, a younger daughter or an older daughter. We actually do want to, I think we want to play as Nick to mean, don't we? Because the only reason I wanted to play as I'll keep our son alive was because he was the only one capable of keeping the Hellenic society going. But at this stage, not much point when he's not part of the Hellenic society anymore. Um, do, do you guys want anything? I can't, I haven't really got much to offer you. You can take a, he also dislikes wealth. Okay, fuck you then. Just give me a, give me a scholar bureaucrat. Get out of here. Did that say we had Sampo added to our, oh, Sampo Fragment. Right, so Sampo is obviously a tier 5 uh, artifact from the uh, Finnic mythology, which essentially is uh, 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 very similar to the Nordic... Uh, help me. Uh, oh, no, the, the Nibelung. The, the, the ring that, that basically self-multiplies. That's basically what that is, except you like grind it out for gold or something like that. So I think you combine all five fragments, and it lets you build... Yes, yeah, so you have to publicly follow the Sermonesco religion. You can, I think you can actually build it, or it might still exist in an artifact somewhere. That's quite cool. Wow. Um, it's quality 5 as well. So when China or the Aztecs, or Norse Aztecs now, I guess, when one of them wants some wealth, we can actually send that off for a, a small fortune's worth. Oh, God. They want us to read the Cathar, the Bible. Um, <laughs> flip from Fraticelli to Cathar. No, I think we're good. Thank you. What the fuck is going on, then, if there are this many heretics? The Ramas convert from Orthodox to Catholic. We were approached and became... Oh, no, it was Jesus that told us to become Fraticelli, wasn't it? And then the Cathar are telling us to also try and convert? And along with the... The poor Byzantine Empire has got so much shit to worry about in terms of secret religious uprisings and cults and whatnot. 
Speaking of which, then, uh, I've updated the map once more to have some slightly different uh, promises here. Let me get the actual update. So you can see the Nick Media on the other side of uh, Constantinople is upgrading as well. Then we can put down another province here, basically wherever we feel like. So um, let's go for... I mean, what, where are we? We haven't got this one yet, according to my fancy map. So we'll go for this one then. Just try and prepare ground. Not currently. Oh, we're already developing a community in that province. Okay, ignore me. Beat myself to it. Okay, what else have we got then? 317. I guess we could start working down to this area of the Byzantine Empire. So why not? Prepare ground there instead. How old are we? 58. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do much more. We've got the central Byzantine Empire. That's gonna cause alone just enough unrest. Now the whole reason I want to do this more than anything else is so that we can potentially get independence. Because that's the one thing we, we've been missing out on this entire campaign is, is you know, obviously autonomy, but also the freedom to do whatever we want with our religion and, and our secret societies and what, to, no matter which secret society that is we happen to join. Whether we stick Hellenic, whether we stick with Fraticelli of all things, or whether we do actually end up going for trying to reform the satanic faith, uh, no matter what we do, independence is going to be the first step to all of that. So I'm definitely going to try and roll with that as soon as possible. Intrigue or... Learning? I think we'll go for the random intrigue bonus. Thank you very much. Just what we needed. Another point of intrigue. Ah, she's spying on us. Time to spy on the spy. Oh, she's our spy master, isn't she? Yeah, okay. So we're going to we're gonna keep an eye on her, see what she's doing. There we go. There's Nicomedia as well. So I'll get that updated on our very fancy map. This is cool. This is cool. We're doing, a, we're doing a really good job here today. So all there is now is just that last community to develop. I think we'll let that one develop on the one we just put down. And then I think I'm going to call it there. Someone's trying to kill my son. Um... Do we know who? No. Two people are trying to fabricate clams and our stuff as well. I'm, I'm keeping that turned off just for righteous imprisonment reasons. Um, because, you, as you know, we can just grab artifacts from people whenever the hell we want. What? Oh my god, I remember you. He's raised a flag in rebellion. Oh my god, this is so good. So, hang on. As far as I know, that means he's not part of our realm right now, right? He becomes the Facilius' vassal. You can't revert tiles from your vassals without pissing off your other vassals. He right now is not our vassal. And if we're going to get independence from the, H uh, from the HRE, from the Byzantine Empire anyway, who cares? If we took this guy in prison, revoke and, and, and take his artifact away before he goes back to being our vassal, I don't think we'll incur any tyranny for that. I don't think he'll make our vassals hate us. This could be... We could get the Armour of Achilles and the Trident of Neptune right now. <gasps> Was murdered on the orders of Basilius Genarios of the Basilius... What the fuck? We're now playing as... I mean, that's fine. Don't get me wrong, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, oh my god, that actually worked out so well. Why did the Basilius kill our son? Former lover, rival, kins kinslayer. Oh, right, we're a, we're a kinslayer. Oh, this is his opinion of us. Oh my god. Um, what the fuck do you mean you kill my son, you weird man? On the plus side, though, we did inherit his Jan and apparently the tapestry of Simara Mapura, whatever that is. Um, there we are. Build cost minus two. Nice work. What weapon did we get exactly? It was, it was like his Jian again. Which is obviously a good sword, but now we've got a sword from him. We don't really want that too much. Yeah, okay. I guess I could give that to... I'm worried that my daughter is also going to be killed, because apparently we know about her. We have the option to send her into hiding, which means she's going to be... She, she has... There must be a plot against her. Uh, is the target of a known or suspected murder plot. Right, okay. So, I'm going to give her the Zuj crossbow to give her plot power defense. As long as she can actually equip it. I'm not entirely sure if she can. Here, take, take the Zuj crossbow... I'm not going to send her into hiding, because it, it, ha it can have some negative effects on her character. But that might... Yeah, she's got that quick plot power defense plus 10%. I'm also going to auto-stop plots. Now that we've got the guy that we were really after by having plots enabled, uh, or uh, allowing, you know, plots to go through a little bit to get righteous imprisonment. Now that we've got this guy dealt with, which was the whole reason we had that, I'm not too concerned about... Not too concerned about turning that off. I want to try and get him... Oh, god damn it. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I want to try and get him in... Pri We've got like 3,000 gold. Someone else must have died. Creeping shadow of the North African Lepirate Moresks. Uh-huh. Yep. I guess someone died who apparently was fairly rich. I can't believe how well the strategies work, by the way. I need to maybe try and pull that off in Game of Thrones, huh? Um, right, so why are we only at 96% war score despite we've got everything of his sieged? Why does that not count? Um, what? Oh, because he's still got some troops somewhere, apparently? Do, do you? 68 men. Oh fuck off! Oh yeah, they're there. Okay, I guess he's got some uh, got got some guys raised. Let's go and let's go and kill these guys dead, and then that should hopefully be the end of the war. There we go. Nice work. So unfortunately, we didn't capture him about. We didn't capture him taking the siege of the capital, which means if we want to trick him in prison, take his stuff, we'll have to do so, and break the law to do it. Unfortunately, uh, your vassals will be displeased by our actions, and his family members will be very pissed off. But it's for the Trident of Neptune. Is it ceremonial? Could we have our Sword of Heaven? It is. We can have a Sword of Heaven and the Trident of Neptune. So look at that. 
Stewardship plus one day supply plus 30. Periodic blesses random kills provinces, which is everything because we're in Greece. Um, well, obviously not. Obviously not like uh, th these places. Th not this province in particular, but basically everywhere else, right? This is good. This is good. Is it because he's a traitor? Maybe we can revoke some stuff? I, I don't know if that's the case, but retrieve artifact? Oh, hang on. Previously belonged to our dynasty. We can... We can just take it off them and not incur any tyranny. Wait, none of this previously belonged to our dynasty, though, did it? Zoo arm protector? Did it? I'm not sure. Retrieve an artifact. Well, what does it say? Uh, retrieve an artifact that previously belonged to your dynasty. Huh. Maybe it's because, technically, it did. Because if we go back far enough, our great-grandfather was the Basilius. And it was him that owned the Trident of Neptune. You've got to remember the Basilius had our uh, house Macedon, Macedon, had uh, the, the Trident of Neptune and the Armour of Achilles. I still want that other... I still want the armor, though. Uh, can we take that as well? Can I, like, uh, plot to kidnap? Steal artifact? We can just straight up steal it. Oh, he's got it equipped, so we can't do that, unfortunately. Um, place a bounty on his head and see if someone will assassinate him. Then we could just maybe try and take it from his next. Is there any way... Can we, like, incite revolt? Can we... Uh, revoke title? He's a traitor, so we can just take his title away. That might work. And now he's gone to someone else's court. Um... Yeah, that might work, because then he'll die, and it'll go to this kid who can't equip it because he's not Hellenic. That actually might have been an okay play. Right, let's take a look at our Trident of Neptune, and obviously get that equipped as soon as possible. Nice work. That's so cool. Where is it? Uh, oh, excuse me. There it is. Trident of Neptune. Boom. Per periodically blesses random coast performances. A lot of these mythological artifacts have some other bonus effect that they'll have. Um, so like Pandora's Box, for example. When we get that, we can just open it and get a random effect out of it. This is cool, though. So what have we got equipped? Then we've got our we've got our our custom Damascus steel smith sword. We've got our Trident of Neptune. Obviously, we lost the armor of Achilles, but we'll try and get that back as soon as possible. That's nice. I'm really interested to see what that will actually do for us. Basilius wants to buy a favor. Uh, sure. 1,600 fucking gold. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm good with that. Thank you. Especially as we are going to try and go for independence as soon as possible. So let's just try and spy on him as well. Why not? Let's see what we can dig up about the guy. That is another thing I want to do before we die. So I, I demanded a title from the Basilius because that was our current ambition. He said no. Just so I could specifically clear that ambition. So now we have the opportunity to forge our bloodline. How close are we to doing that, by the way? Uh, murder execute 30 people. We're 4 out of 30 on that. We, uh, we are nowhere near any of them. We might have to go for the event-driven one. There's no reason why we couldn't build 10 cities, 10 castles, or 10 temples, though. Bear in mind the money we've got right now. Actually, we might even be able to do that immediately. Um, 10 castles. I mean, if, if, if each one's only 400 gold, then we can do that immediately. What do we want to build? 10, 10 castles, I would assume, yeah? Let's fucking do it. Let's, let's build castles. Oh, we can't in some places. Um, let's just try and build castles everywhere where it's possible to build a castle. So a lot of these three holding provinces are already going to have... You know, the, the, the prerequisite. You need to build a city, a temple, castle in each province before you can build an additional one of any of those. But for the most part, a lot of these are going to already have that. Oh, shit. This actually might just be doable. It's going to be close. Um, what about some of our provinces up here that I don't really want to hang on to if we can avoid it? Oh, shit. We might not be able to do it. We're close, though. Damn it. That's so annoying. Okay. Um, oh, over here, there's another one. Castle. And then we also have, like, another province. Yeah, here. What have you got? Another one. Oh, shit. Uh, what are we up to now, then? Just judging by the amount of money we've got. Like, what we like, six? Oh, we haven't built any. It doesn't count until we actually build it, unsurprisingly. Okay, fair enough. We've also got one here, which we can't do. What, what's our domain size right now? It's really weird. We've got a bunch of weird provinces I didn't know we actually had. Um, okay, this one. Oh, there's another one. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, this could be it. Crete. Come on. Nothing. Already already done. Oh, God. Uh, did I check the, ch check the islands? Yeah, okay. I think I've checked everywhere now. But there's a tiny little island here. No, unfortunately not. Come on. Is that... That can't be... Oh, no. There's, oh, we've already got one built there. I suppose we could wait for some of these things to just build. And then if we if we send our... So let's go to our province here. Let's send you to go and oversee construction. Our build cost time modifier is already so small anyway. Look, that's going to be built in no time. 26th of March. Boom. There we go. Okay, and then we'll move you over to another province. Oh, shit. That's so good. Um, give that away immediately. We've got the castle of Argos. Um, wow. This is... We actually might just be able to fulfill this before the end of the year. That's insane. All right, here we go. So some of the castles have just started finished building. It took less than a year there. Nice work. Okay, so that one's done. Oh, God, here they come. Wow. Uh, visit the grave of my lover. The Well, the man who we stole the... Oh, my God, I bet we charmed him. I bet we charmed him with our good Lavinus to make him like us a bit more. Let's go and see if he left up, left behind us a... Uh... Oh, he didn't leave us. Didn't, didn't leave us any sort of lover's memento. We Oh! No, we're going to visit his grave of our love. Uh, he was our lover and our rival. 
He didn't leave us behind a memento. He didn't leave us behind the armor of Achilles that we wanted. So instead, we will take his skull and we will make sweet, sweet love to it. There we go. Okay. Um, is that just gonna just gonna sit around now? How? Huh? Where is it? Uh, skull trophy. There we are. That, oh no, that's the wrong man. Sorry. We got a lot of we got a lot of skulls and a lot of heads and a lot of crystal whatevers lying around. There it is. Thank you. Very, very nice. Okay, let's give some of this shit away. That actually might be enough. One, uh, and then two we've already given away. So three, uh, four. I mean, I could just check the bloodline. Five, but this is cooler. Six. And we can build another one there as well. Seven. Shit, this is going to be close. Oh my god, is that it? Damn it, we only at seven. Uh, build eight. Okay, we're at eight out of ten. Right, okay, so let's build. So two of those provinces had, what was it, Thessalonica? Has the ability to build another castle. Come on, it's got to be somewhere else. Don't fuck me like this game. Come on, it's got to be somewhere. Let me check my domain here. Ooh, <gasps> whoa. Everyone knows I spent years directing the book and my book went today and presented with the final product. Equine Maxims, in honor of Glitter Hoof, huh? I scratched my chin, almost survived, but the work has finally been finished. I've, I had no idea what that is, but that sounds incredible. And we've also finished another one of our communities in Sardeus. Where the hell is Sardeus? Uh, but your, oh, there it is, right. I was going to say your guess is as good as mine, but apparently I found it. Okay, so that one is now, let's change the color of that on my little fancy map. This one is also now Hellenic. And then we're just waiting, I believe, now on this one here. Yeah, so this one's still developing. But if I open up my, my fancy map for you now, look at this. We managed to get all of the entire central part of the Visited Empire flipped over to Hellenic there, which I think is uh, pretty handy. Pretty handy. I'd love to get some more done, but, I mean, the, a lot of this, this northern area as well, uh, these places, what I'm about to color gray... All of this stuff is outside of the Byzantine Empire, so we can't really adjust that too much. But wow, we've done a pretty goddamn good job, all things considered. I know I said I was going to stop at the age of 62, but it's just so tempting to carry on when we're doing as well as we are right now. I want to get a lot more on the other side. Actually, do we really want to... I was going to say, do we want to get some more on the other side of the river done as well? But I feel like we might end up just blocking ourselves in, like, like going for areas up towards our provinces. I kind of want to keep all of this untouched in case we want to expand our realm in that way. But on the other side of the river, I'm more than happy to do so. So where did I sort of end it on? So down here, we could start work again and, and head up from there. So go up through towards the uh, towards the Black Sea. Oh, I don't know. 349. This is going to be risky because we're 62 right now. Do we have any health problems? No, we don't. Um, in that case, flip back over to hunting. I don't know if we can get another hunting dog or we can go for theology. Let's go for hunting. Let's go for hunting right now, because that can also give us brawny as well. There's another two provinces down. Shit, this is so risky. Okay, that was quick. Um, I was just giving out some more of the vice royalties, because I keep forgetting to give those back out. So all of our vassals did hate us for a brief second there. Um, but now I think I've got them all back on side. I'm going to send people out to find it. Let's go for that. Oh my god, if she gets the white stag of this guy too. I've, I've never actually gotten the white stag on a video, I think. I th I, we spent years and years and years hunting that white bear as Joris Bonson never actually did find it. So we're looking at 8 out of 10. Now, I was developing somewhere up here, which required... Yeah, so here we go. So in Osora, we still require a temple holding before we can build the castle. So when that's done, we can move on to the castle. Then we just need one more. But the issue is, I don't think... Oh, we've got the one more building there. So that's it. When this one's done, so that's the 3rd of July, year 1000. So, oh, it's just about the turn of the century as well. Happy new millennium, everyone. And then this one up here, when that's done, which is the 3rd of August, we're done. This is so good. We're just going to live another year, basically, to get our bloodline finished. And then... Oh, fuck. Do you want me to join you in the war against the tyranny of the Basilius? Um, is he a... T I'm going to decline. I'm staying neutral. I'm, I'm, well, I mean, I'm not staying neutral. It's, it's very much a false dichotomy. We're either with them or against them in this scenario. Um, despite the fact that I'm not really fucking interested. Okay. We just converted a horse to Fraticelli. Fine. Or we'll rest in the embrace of Jupiter. So Ephesus, wherever the hell Ephesus is. So this one here. Get my fancy map update again. Is it, it makes it so much easier to keep track of these things. Unfortunately, there is no way to know otherwise. Is that a separate one? Oh, God. Chios is somewhere as well. We're not already preparing ground there. No, we're not. Damn it. I thought I might have missed one. We didn't get the white stag, but we did get the white stag. It eludes me, giving us Marshall plus one. It would be real nice to get Brawny. Shock at the end of her life manages to pick up Brawny of all things. If we got the... We didn't get the pelt of um, the Nemean lion, did we? I feel like we... Did? No, I'm going crazy. Uh, excellent idea. Uh, buy my caravan. Thank you very much. Right, so the Basilius still got the pal of the Nemean Lion then. Uh, yes, he does. Right. I want that now. Only because it will help extend our life along with everything else. Take our marshal. We could probably take literally anyone better at that stage. Oh, for fuck's sake. Still, it's so annoying with Vice Royalties. I just want to dish them out and never have to look at them again. I know if you're a Min Maxer, which I'm not. But if you're a Min Maxer, then it's um probably the best strategy to play. But the game's... Oh, fuck off. Already so easy that I don't think I need to be worried about Min Maxing... Oh, nice, okay. Don't need to worry about min-maxing titles to that extent as well. Like, every single fucking vassal that dies, you have to dish it all back out. Right, there we go. 
And then here, we build ourselves a castle. I hope these people in Rebellion don't end up burning down any of my holdings. Because we're so... 27th of September. 11... Uh, oh, sorry. 1... 1001. That's so hard to say. Then, we're good. The bloodline is complete. And I don't think I've ever done the castle building bloodline before. Castle is finished. Is that it? Is that it? That's it. We've built uh, 10 castles. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, we're done. Um, so let's send that away. Now, I don't, I don't remember what this gives. I'm hoping it'll just give build time, build cost modifiers. Something like that. The Realm of Stone. Despo oh, God. I hope it doesn't give, like, fucking garrison size or some garbage. Despoina Minotaur's tireless efforts in the construction of a new fortifications aimed at the defense of a realm have immortalized her name as an ingenious and considerate planner. She's populated many of the hills of Greece with impregnable embodiments of wondrous technology, technological ingenuity, projecting a sense of safety on all of her subjects. For some time now, Greece has acquired a reputation as a realm of towers and stone walls, secure even from the wildest horde. A strong de Oh, my God. It's terrible. A strong defense is the best guarantee for safety. Noble Vassal Tax plus 5%, not bad. Feudal Vassal Opinion plus 4, not bad. Has access to special cast buildings. Okay, this might redeem it. This might redeem it, because otherwise that's a pretty shitty bloodline, I'll be honest with you. It's a nice it's nice to look at. It's a nice, nice symbol. Um, matrilineal inheritance, matrilineal transfer. Oh, interesting. That could complicate things. Has access to special castle buildings. What, though? What have we got access to? Insulated sections. Gives morale of armies plus 5%. And how many of those can we build? Four? Oh, this might be good. And it gives cultural and and military tech points. Oh, this could be very good. Um, I'm I wonder what sort of tech points we need to build the higher levels of that thing. Cause that sounds like it could be could be insanely overpowered. Um, well, not really, seeing as we have to go through all the all the bloodline issues to get it. Oh my god, killing fields. This is good. Uh, charitable. So right now that's giving 10% morale of army bonus, which is obviously incredible when stacked with the training grounds or whatever else. It gives tech points. It does give garrison size and fall level, which I was a little bit worried about, but that's okay. What tech points do we need then? Improve keeps level 5. Oh, so then it gets kind of expensive. Yeah, that's how they balance that, I see. Oh, no. The Holy Spirit left me, and I felt less than some cynics commented that I was finally sober, but they did not understand what true love of the Lord felt like. We gained our diplomacy back, so I guess that's something. That's probably also a reason why a lot of our vassal settlers, because we literally had zero diplomacy. So another one of our provinces is finished. Um, I mean, where did it finish, though? I have absolutely no idea. It was like, uh, oh, was it that place? Yeah, okay. So that's a little bit annoying, because that's obviously a separate realm right now, so I'm not really sure what happens if that if that converts um so which one on the map is it? it's that one so this one we've already got as well according to my map yep absolutely very nice so we just went on uh was it like this one as well and then we're basically yeah i think we just gotta wait on that one to convert i'm probably not gonna convert anymore at this stage because right now we are 65 i've gone five years over schedule but we are going to embrace our religion very very soon we need 500 virtue let's start saving i am just to ensure that this goes through safely and then converts properly I'm going to... Oh, there we go. Like here as well. Very nice. Okay. Uh, just to ensure this goes through properly, I'm going to join the war against the Basilius, or, or with the Basilius, in defense of the realm, unify everything, just, to, just in case there is some sort of, uh, I don't know, like a minor line of code that's like, cannot convert outside of your own realm. Something like that. Make sure it's all going to go through, and then we're going to see an entire... Um, almost the central part of the Byzantine Empire flip over to an entirely separate religion, and it literally a click of a button. This is going to be so weird. It's also going to its gonna take them a very, very long time to undo the damage we're going to do here. We'll wait for revolts. We'll wait for religious unrest. We'll wait for rulers to start convert to Hellenic, because ideally they will. Then we can break free. Off to the dungeons with his kids. There we are. That'll do it. That's the best way to win a rebellion war. Just say, no, we're not interested in the war. Then turn up and take his son prisoner. Good work. Okay, that'll do it. Uh, 81%. And then where are his troops? Because that should... Where are his troops? Oh, God. Didn't tell me they're like... Oh, is that all of them all the way down there? Where are your armies? Where are you leading armies? Yeah, okay. Um, I guess we'll just go ahead and siege his stuff then, because we're, we're almost done with things. 80, 81 percent war score. We don't have to do much more at this stage. Right, that's that problem solved. So now we have the choice to flip over everybody to our secret religion. I just want to do a final check of everyone on the map, make sure everything is ready to go. We do have to use the 500 virtue, and then we can just press this button and, and see if everything works as expected. Like a couple more months just to tick over here, just in case there were any final final little areas that hadn't finished developing, you know, waiting for them to actually turn into a full-blown Hellenic community. And I think we're clear. So let's do it. Let's do it. Let's see if it works. Open dot faith and let's cause just absolute pandemonium and chaos. At long last, we shall reap the rewards of our hard work. Any fellow Hellenic willing to join me in this victory as I find peace and prosperity in reveling the struggle, revealing the struggle which has been going on within our lands. A new era begins. All your fellow followers of Jupiter within your realm will convert to the true religion, while others will be offered the choice to follow suit. Gain devout leader, giving martial, uh, giving diplomacy, sorry, monthly piety. Oh. <laughs> What a mess. 
What a fucking mess. What have we done to the Byzantine Empire? My god. Okay, I should have really gone around and recruited more of the actual, uh, more of the Dukes if those guys wanted to join us. But to be honest, this, we were just doing it to cause chaos in the realm. Uh, my god, have we caused some chaos in the realm. Look at that. Hellenic Pagan. Zero moral authority. It doesn't make sense we'd have zero moral authority after flipping most of the fucking Byzantine Empire over to this religion, but hey. So it's now a struggle between Orthodox Catholicism and Hellenic for control of the uh, Byzantine Empire. This is funny. This is so good. Now is the time. If we ever want to get independence, now is it. They're at war with the Aztecs. They've got a bunch of religious uprest, a bunch of religious up people. They don't gain anything. They actually just don't get any sort of like modifier. They just literally flip over. Well, that's a bit boring. Well, there we go. Wow, what a what a weird, boring old... Oh, and of course, we are also Hellenic, which I don't think we'll stick around for long, but there we go. We can determine our zodiac sign. We are apparently Libra, which gives us stewardship, same trait opinion, uh, boring shit like that. And, yeah, I, I mean, I don't think we really want to stick with it, because, of course, you know, we were trying to do the whole uh, satanic side of things here. And there is no uh, satanic side until we reform the religion, and honestly, that was not on the table. We've got a different religion to reform for this series. But, my God, have we sown enough chaos. Are you proud of me now, Jesus? We've done it. We've defeated the false believers of, of the orthodox faith, and now we return back to, hopefully, Catholicism. Uh, secretly convert to orthodox. That would do. That would do. Fuck it. We'll go back. We'll adopt orthodoxy once again. Let's do it all Jesus at the end of the day, right? Wow. What a mess. What a journey we've been on today. We've, we've done many, many great things. We've built a thousand castles. We've built a new realm. We've built a new realm here filled with castles and, and, and many Hellenic pagans. And apparently a ridiculous treasury the size of, of Mars. Thank you all for watching. Give a big shout out to the insane top tier level patrons who made this series possible in the first place. Oh my god, our court size also cut down a little bit there. Did you see that? That's great news. A big thank you to Aiden W, Alchemia, Anthony Gawley, Asuna Kurito, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Bacon Kitten, Ben Hofflin, Chesty, Croesus, Donald, Doolin of Gondolin, Facunda Vasquez, Ghost of Protocol, Gogola, Sarik, James Shea, Jimbo, Jonah Waters, Justin Wallace, Caden Carter, Michael Muller, My Name Isn't Dio, Musk Ratful, Napuskus Number One, Necrofin, and Pelvis Presley, Rodin, Richard Clark, Scott, Skaz, Meg Mustaine, Somnus, The Forsaken One, Seabag Cruz, Tom Terry 18, Tyler Kendall, Tyler McLam, Vacuous Backers, Void Prince Kibo, William Green, and Zazzy 711. Big Shout out to these guys for their support at the Insane Tier Lovers on Patreon. Thank you for making the channel possible in the first place. It's much appreciated. And a thank you as well has to go out as well to Uwu Daddy, Asro, Adam Person, Andrew Walsh, Andrew Wilson, Anchor, Attila, Austin Taylor, Bordoom, Ben Trope, Wayne Gunn, Betamus Max, Better Valerian, Black Double H, Chris, Corgi Circus, Corey CA, David Van Diepen, Don, Don Honey217, Emerald Beam, Exploding Knees, Gaz, Genji Zerka, Gothamo, Gray, Haji Dumar, Icarus, Icy the Great, Ida C, Jackson P, Jay Lara, Jacob Wolfie, James Barnes, Jason Sushu, Jose, Jeebus Cross, Dior and Vries, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beer, Justin Plock, Justin Walters, Luan and Thomas, Luke Wallace, Mustolp, Monty, Mosey Sampson, Nathan Flores, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Nostrus, Nick, Noah Gallimore, Organized Confusion, Pan Samu, Panther Pearl, Payback 137, Payton Denisar, Russian Oligarch, Billionaire, Brian Hooper, Sagatair, Sam Kears, Shari, Smurtworm, Smooth Octopus, Socrates, Super Nanny 089, The Insane Pickle, The One Ring, Voluntary, Varagon, Voodoo Mumbo, Will Wade, Wilson SF, Wolfie, Yorker, Zach, and Zico 2. Thank you guys all for your support on Patreon as well. See you all maybe tomorrow or maybe the day after, depending on what's going on for for the succession, I can only assume, given that she's 66 fucking years old.